Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm going to lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM Music Theory and Practice workbooks with a view to taking the exam grades with the ABRSM. There are loads of resources available to help you and on my website, if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books I have available. I have available a book that I've written with tips and techniques. It's the ABRSM, how to take your ABRSM theory guide with lots of hints and tips on how to make the best use of your exam experience, which ultimately is what these workbooks are helping you to lead up to. And so we're now on to section G, which is talking about rests. So if you find the theory information sheet on my website, so SharonBill.com and find sheet G for grade one theory and you need to grab your ABRSM music theory and practice workbook. You need a sharp pencil, so either a very sharp traditional pencil or I use a mechanical pencil just to keep that nice and sharp and you will need an eraser also. So let's move to page 11. I'm not sure if I said the right page previously. We're on page 11, so I'll mark G and we're talking about rests. Up until now, if I just refer to the sheet, you can see that we've talked about the notes and the note values and that always represents periods of sound. So we have a period of sound for four beats and so we would call that a semi brief or a whole note and we're referring to the sound however there are also corresponding periods of silence music is also as much about the silence as it is the sound at times I think it was Messiaen who said that sort of a quote music is very much to do with the silence as well as the sound and so each note will have a corresponding period of time in silence and so we have our four beat note we have our four beat rest of silence we have our two beat note two beats of silence one beat note one beat of silence we have half a beat of note half a beat of silence and then just as we add an extra tail to make a quarter of a beat note we add sort of an extra tail here into the rest to make a quarter of a beat of silence and so each of these rests will have the same name the same time name and so we could call that a semi brief or a whole note rest depending upon whether you choose the classical terminology or the sort of rock pop and also the American phraseology, both of which are useful. It's good to know both of them, but you just need to use one and be consistent in your choice of which system you use. I'll try and keep referring to both. So here we have our semi brief or whole note rest, four beats, which is easily confused, I think, with this two beat note, this half note or minimum beat. And the way you can just spot the difference is the four beat rest hangs off the fourth line, there's your little clue. Whereas the two beat rest just sits on the middle line. So you're hanging around for a long time on the fourth line for four beats, that's the way I remember it. The crotchet rest is usually represented by this sort of vague wiggle, we'll look at how that's um, drawn in a moment. That's our one beat rest, crotchet or quarter note rest. The quaver or eighth note rest looks a little by, bit like a number seven with a blob and then the semiquaver or the sixteenth note rest adds another little line and blob into that so we just add another rung to that. So let's go back to page 11. So here we're drawn to 
the semi brief rest by all means this is you know your book it's your workbook so have a little go at just copying that semi brief rest make sure your pencil's sharp because we don't want the box filling up the whole space we only want it just showing a little bit below that line so that's our four beat note hanging from the fourth line and then our two beat sorry four beat rest and then our two beat rest just sits on the middle line now the crotchet or quarter note rest is usually represented with this symbol here it can be used this is sort of the old school way of sort of this backwards number seven however once you know that that exists nobody really tends to use that anymore for the plain fact that it's much too confusing with this one if you compare those two it's just the other way around and that's just a little bit too confusing so we don't tend to use that just stick to this symbol here now it takes a little bit of getting used to drawing that quarter note or crotchet rest so this is the one beat rest I suggest if you draw a letter Z and then hook a letter C on the bottom you've kind of got it so just have a little practice at that if you notice its position just above this fourth line it's not an absolute precise placement just variations around that sort of area so we've got a z with a c so just have a little practice at getting used to that it's not quite as tricky as the treble clef but it just takes a little bit of practice so they usually should sort of rest in the middle of the stave that's the area that we're looking to fill and so if you start it just on that fourth line and you've got your symbol. Now there's just one point to add before we go on to attempting the exercise two and that is, so they've explained it here in your workbook and also I've made reference to it on this sheet and this whole note or semi brief rest that's worth four beats hanging off the fourth line also represents a complete bar silence regardless of the time value of each bar so even if it's in a bar of three four or two four although technically that rest is too big for those bars we still just use that as a quick shorthand way of full bars rest so if you've got a complete bar silence there's no need to keep adding up little combinations of rests we can just literally plop in um a four beat rest, a semi brief or a whole note rest and that will do the job. And so in exercise two, the question asks us to add a single rest, one rest in each of the bars, wherever there's an asterisk to show that there's a gap. And it's asking us to complete the bar, not with a note this time, like we have done in the previous exercises, but this time using a single rest to complete the bar. So you need to be aware of what your time signature is. And then you perhaps need to just refer back to sheet G, where I've shown you your rest values so you can get your maths going to complete these bars. They've given us this example to begin with. So we've had a little look at this together. So we should have four beats in a bar. We've got a one beat and a one beat. If you're not sure about these note values still, by all means pop back to um, either section A or section F will have them all in. F will include your new 16th notes as well, your new semi-quavers. <coughs> Do excuse me. Here we go then. So we've got a one add a one, which makes two. In order to complete the bar we need another two beats and so the single rest which is worth two beats is this one here we need our minim or half note rest sitting on the middle line therefore that fills the bar okay we've got a one add a one add a one that gives us three we should have four so we're one beat short and so this wiggly rest here is our one beat rest 
our crotchet or quarter note rest. So just keep popping back to sheet G and continuing that um, process. So I suggest you perhaps press pause, have a go at sections A, B and C and then re-access into the video and I'll work through that with you. Keep information sheet G to hand and you can keep popping back. So I'm um, under the assumption that you've had a little go at this on your own. Don't worry if you've made some mistakes. We're always writing in pencil, so we can always erase and have another go. It's always best to learn from your mistakes. And so let's look here. We need to add a single rest to complete a bar. So here we know that there's some math that needs to be completed to fill this bar. We should have three beats. We've got two beats here. We've got half a bit here, so we've got two and a half. We need another half a beat to complete the bar. And if you refer to your sheet, you'll see that that is half a beat. So we need our quaver rest or our, or our eighth note rest. Now here, this one is easy peasy because no matter what the time signature, the single bars rest, it's always our four beat rest hanging off the fourth line. There we go, and that's job done. Don't even need to do any adding up for that one. This bar is okay. This is the bar that now needs completing. So let's see what we've got. We've got a two beat. We've got a half beat. We've got a quarter beat. So we've got two and three quarters. If it is that you struggle with your fractions, I always envisage there's our whole if we chop it up into quarters we've got a half here and we've got a quarter here we need another quarter so if you just visualize it that way that helps and our quarter beat rest if you refer to sheet G we need that extra line to give our semi quaver or 16th note rest. Okay, so let's move on to B. Now actually this one, we can see quite easily at a glance what's missing. We've got one, two, three, four quarters here, so that's definitely the one beat. And we've only got one, two, three quarters here, so we know that we're a quarter, just like before, missing. And so we just need another quarter beat rest so there's our 16th note or our semi quaver rest okay jump into this next bar we've got a half a half a half so that's one and a half and so we need another half a beat and that's that rest there that's our quaver rest or our eighth note rest and so the last bar remains to be completed We've got one beat, we should have two, and so we need another one beat. And if you refer to your sheet G, just to help you, it's that one beat rest that takes a little bit of drawing. That's our crotchet rest, or our quarter note rest. Okay, so now we're on to the last little exercise. We need to have four beats in a bar, but regardless of what the time signature is, we know that a full, a full bar's rest is that four beat rest. It just so happens it just nicely fits in with his time signature but that's irrelevant. It's just a single rest for a complete bars rest. So there's our four beat rest hanging off the fourth line so we know we've positioned that correctly. Okay jump into the next gap. So in this bar we've got a one and a one which makes two. We should have four and so we need the two beat rest which if you remember just sits on the middle line. Just refer to your sheet, your PDF to help you to remember that. Okay, next bar, we've got a one, a one, a one, and a half. So we've got one, two, three and a half. We should have four, and so we just need another half. There's not a lot of room there, tall and thin. That'll do the job. That's our half a beat rest, so that's a quaver or an eighth note rest. And so the last bar remains, we've got a one, 
two halves also make one and another one so we've got one two three we should have four and so we know we need a one beat rest that's our crotchet or quarter note rest and there we go so it just takes a little bit of time become, to become familiar with all of these new symbols keep referring to the sheet and you'll soon get it and we will keep coming back to this information so keep this to hand because we'll keep referring back to these new rests now they're with us to stay I hope that's been helpful to you I hope you've enjoyed it I really do enjoy it I love doing music theory so I hope I'm just spreading that enthusiasm to you thanks for watching if you can give me a thumbs up and that would be fab it'd be encouraging to me and subscribe to the channel so that you know you'll keep updated please do go to sharonbill.com and everything that you need to know can be easily found there thanks for watching bye